So right about here is when everything went wrong. So today I'm going to be making a simple knife. So this knife is not going to be folding, but it is going to be just a nice rigid knife. So I'm going to be starting from plain steel. I'm going to temper the blade. I'm going to put a bevel on the blade and then I'll make a nice handle for it. So the steel I'm going with is actually an old lawnmower blade from my dad's mower. What I've read online is this is actually 1080 steel, which is really great for tempering and good for knife blades. So the shape I'm going with is called a drop point knife. It's a really simple shape, so I think it'll be great for my first knife making a bevel on it. So what I'll do is I'll just trace out the shape that I want. I'll go take an angle grinder, I'll cut that rough shape out, then we can start making the bevel and shaping up the knife on the belt sander. And once I have all the bevels done, we'll go ahead and do a heat treatment, we'll stabilize the metal, and then temper it to make it nice and hard. Then I'll take a piece of this ironwood and I'll make a handle for it. So let's go ahead and start tracing out this shape. workbench with my knife blank. The next step I need to do is make a bevel on the blade edge. So to do that, I'm going to be making a jig so I can make a consistent bevel the whole entire distance of the blade. So right here, I have a perfectly square and parallel chunk of cherry. What I'm going to do is clamp my blade on the front side of the cherry. Then I'm going to drill a hole halfway in the middle of the cherry so I can put this carriage bolt into this chunk of wood. This way I can screw the threads up on the bolt and raise the angle of my bevel. This way when I'm sanding the bevel on the belt sander, I can get a consistent rate on both sides and also I can vary the bevel using the threads so let's go ahead and drill this hole in this piece of cherry sander I need to scribe a line in the middle of the blade edge so I'll know where to stop on the bevel this will give me a reference point so I don't make the bevel too deep I'm just gonna take some sharpie I'll put it on the bevel edge then I'm going to take a quarter inch drill bit, which is the same thickness as the metal, and I'll take the point of the drill bit and I'll just run it across the table and scribe a line in the middle of the sharpie line. So then you can see by doing that method, I have a perfect line straight down the middle of the blade's edge. So let's go ahead and put this on the jig and let's go over to the belt set. So I just finished up with this side of the bevel. As you can see, it has a constant distance from the bottom of the blade to the top, which is awesome. So I'm gonna unclamp it and I'm gonna flip it around and do the other side of the bevel. So here is my knife out of my bevel jig. As you can see, the blade edge has a nice consistent bevel. And if you look at the other side, they're almost identical, which is perfect. As you can see, there is some color changing on the edge of the blade, but that does not matter because I am going to stabilize this metal. And before I temper the metal, I want to go ahead and cut the three holes that are going to be in the handle to hold on the wood. I'm just going to eye these holes and space them equally. And then with a quarter inch drill bit, I'll cut the three holes. And to fill in those three holes, I have this quarter inch steel dowel, which will go through the wood and through the metal handle to make a very strong bond. So let's go ahead and punch these three holes. here is when everything went wrong. So the next step is to stabilize the metal and then temper it. So right here I have my homemade furnace. This will make temperatures upwards towards 1800 degrees. 
as you can see, it sounds like I know what I'm doing. Although, I was not aware that this forge could exceed temperatures over 2500 degrees. So, that was just about the last time that I saw that knife. With my past experience on this forge, I had never seen temperatures over 1800 degrees. The main problem was that I used a different air source, which was this leaf blower compared to the hair dryer that I used before. This basically made an inferno and sadly melted my knife. Okay everyone, so I had a catastrophic failure. You might be wondering where the knife is and what happened to the tempering process. Well, there's the knife. Believe it or not, my forge actually got hot enough to melt steel. That means it got over 2,500 degrees with the coal. My main problem is that I had too much airflow with that leaf blower. I thought I could have kept the blade at 1,600 degrees, but in the blink of an eye, it just melted and turned into this blob. The only remains are the tip of the blade, which is right here. So that time did go into nothing because this is useless to me. Although I did learn a lot about forging and that next time I only need to really temper the edge of the blade with a propane torch. Nonetheless, Let's go ahead and make a new one. And just like that, I have a new blade right here. After experimenting with the first one, this second one turned out even better. Which means I'm now ready to stabilize and temper the blade like I was with the first one. So let's go ahead and take some map gas. Let's just heat up only the blade. I'll let it sit in still air, and then we can move on to the tempering process. So I have my same forge, but now I'm only using a propane torch instead of coal and a leaf blower. So I'll go ahead and set my blade in here. I'll let it get red hot, and I'll use the magnet trick to make sure it's hot enough to be stabilized. So if you watch, I can take a magnet and the steel becomes no longer magnetic. So I'm going to go ahead and set it here and I'll just let it cool down back to room temperature. Okay everyone, so it's been about 30 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and take the knife and I'll put it back in the forge and we'll heat it up again. blade has cooled down, I'm going to put it in the foundry for the last time to heat it up to about 1450 degrees. Then I'll douse it in this pot of oil that I'll heat up to about 140 degrees to temper the blade for its final heat treatment. And I do want to mention I am heating the oil up a little bit. The reason for this is just to make it a little bit thinner so its viscosity will be more like water and not like oil. This way it'll surround the blade quicker and cool it down a lot faster. I'm just using some denatured alcohol in this cup that I drilled some holes in for airflow. So I'll go ahead and light this. And we'll go ahead and start heating up my blade. Just like that, the knife should be tempered. Okay everyone, so now that the tempering process is finished, I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the wire wheel and just shine up the blade portion of this knife. And we can come back and make a handle out of this iron wood. So let's go ahead and start shining it up. I now have the blade sanded and it's ready for its handle. But before I start messing with the knife, I'm gonna go ahead and put some masking tape over the blade so I do not scratch it. of the handle cut out. So the next step is to drill the holes into the handle. So I'm just gonna line it up onto the blade and then I'll mark them with a fast cap pen and then I'll go cut them out. Mark the 
sections of broth that I'm gonna cut. Now I'm ready to put the wooden handles onto the knife. So these metal pins are going to be most of the strength to hold the wood to the metal. But just to adhere the wood to the knife, I'm going to be using 5 minute epoxy. This way the handles will never come off. So let's go ahead and mix two equal parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off these clamps and it looks like the epoxy dried really nice So let's go over to the belt and spindle sander and let's start shaping this handle So I'm pretty much done with the sanding on the machines. I got the knife down to the shape I want and it's looking great. I just want to finish it up with some hand sandpaper and some files just to get some epoxy off and to get it to its final form to put a finish on it. So now all the sanding is done to this handle and it feels absolutely amazing in my hand So I'm ready to put a finish on it to seal the wood. I chose Danish oil I really like Danish oil because it really brings the grain out of the wood and it can always be reapplied to bring back the same finish as before So let's go ahead and crack open this lid and let's go ahead and put some finish on this handle So now I can finally take off this painter's tape. With the handle finished, I need to move on to sharpening the blade. So right here I have a Smith's sharpening stone, and I'm not too experienced with sharpening, but I'm just going to go even numbers on each side of the blade with passes on the stone. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot. So with several passes on the stone, you can see this knife is nice and sharp and has no problem cutting through this cardboard paper. So the last and final step I want to do is I want to stamp an E right on this flat spot on the knife. I only really get one shot at this, so I got to make it perfect. I'm going to be using the steel stamp right here, which has an E on the end, and I'll just hit it with the ball peen hammer. Okay everyone, so as you can see, I got the E in the blade. It is shallow, but it is there, and I think it looks great. The only thing this knife needs now is a sheath, but that will be part two of this series. So with the knife finished, let's go ahead and get some pictures.
After an attempt and fail and much wasted time, I finally succeeded with a beautiful little knife. This process was long and tough, but it was totally worth it, not only with a successful knife, but also a lot of helpful knowledge. As I said earlier, I'm going to be making a second part where I make a sheath for the knife. But that's it for this video, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.